Hey. Hey, everybody. Tugboat and E.D. and Pippi Pop and Keith and Mark. I'm glad you're all here. Happy Friday. You know, something that I kind of miss, I don't know if anybody got into, um, uh, David Lynch has a YouTube channel and um, during the pandemic he did a thing where he would um, would do the weather report every day and then on Fridays he had this thing where he was like if you can believe it it's a Friday once again and I miss that I was a big that was a good thing for my Fridays hey Rudak good evening good evening I don't know what I'm gonna draw tonight. I um. I don't know what I'm in the mood for. I did get this to show off my 2025 planner. I got this uh, one with a really adorable kitten on it. A little dark though. Oh, did I say 2025? Yeah, I'm going going all the way. Hey, Lucas. These things, this is my favorite planner. These are, and I hardly ever get to show them off because it usually has, like, all my work stuff in it. But um, I haven't really started filling this one out. But this is, like, critical to how I work is these weekly spreads where I plan out what I'm going to do every week, keep my notes and stuff organized on this side. A very nice, simple layout. And these books are great. They have like um, just grid paper in the back for sketches. And then if you run out of paper in the back, hold on. If you run out of note paper in the back, they have these guys that are cool. Just little 40 sheets that fit right in the back here. Very handy. And this is such a great size. Like it goes right in your pocket if you need it to. Very nice. So I'm excited. Every time I get my new planner going, um, it always feels so like, uh, um, what's the word? Just hopeful. <laughs> like, like next year might actually be a year that um, is worth planning. Uh, the red booklet is just um, grid paper. I guess I didn't open it up. It's just grid paper like the back. I don't know if you can really even see that on here. But then the paper in here also is like um, really nice. Ma calls it Bible paper because it's very thin. Very thin and smooth, but it's nice to write and draw on. And I use, I don't know if you guys think this is as fascinating as I do, but I love, I love my planner. So I use um, this gel pen and you can buy different refills for it in any color you want. And it's just two colors. So I got one that's orange and one that's black. Very satisfying to me. Very satisfying color combo. And then I also use these guys, these little um, Tombow brush pens. 
because they're just about perfect to fill in a line of the grid. So great. It's like a field notes, but it's like thicker because those field notes are like, um, I don't know how many pages are in those field note books, maybe like 60, but it's just like staple folded. And this is like um, fat enough that they had to sew the binding. Yeah, Rudag, Abujo out of the cheap dot paper notebooks. That's all you need. This is, that's how I got started was trying to do um, bullet journaling. And um, it didn't, like the way bullet journals work didn't really work for me exactly perfect. Um, so I kind of have a, like my own system that's almost a bullet journal, but using a, a weekly planner like this. Like there's a lot of people who do bullet journaling who like literally lay out their stuff by hand to look like this. And in fact, that's what I did for um, probably four years was do a layout like this. Um, just by hand. And then I found these guys and um, I love them. I meant the red one. I looked into the rocket book last week. Not sure what you mean, Pippi. That is not a stupid question, Ed. A bullet journal is a, um, it's sort of a cross between a planner and a journal. Um, and it's like basically a system where you can do it. You don't have to buy a planner for it. It's basically designed so it'll work in any blank book or anything with lines or a grid or whatever. Um, and it's just a way of, the, the idea with the bullet journal is basically that um, you, don't, you don't hold things in your head. You always just write them right down into your little journal and you prioritize, or, or you don't really prioritize them, but it's like the idea is every day you go look at everything you've written down and you migrate all the stuff you wrote that's worth keeping to the next day and you just sort of keep migrating important things. And there's there's like ways that people have of like moving things like, oh, this is important, but I don't need to worry about it until July, so I'll write it in this calendar part of my bullet journal. But um, the, the difficult thing about finding out about bullet journaling is that there's a ton of people who are into it as like an art project where they like decorate their journals and they do these like wild drawings and have all these like fancy pants layouts that they like to do and um and like they're they're really sort of at least for me I found it like I find that part of it really kind of off-putting because like I'm busy doing art for a living I don't need my um my planner to be an art project either um so, um, what's the, I think the guy, there's a guy whose name is, I think, Ryder Carroll, who's the guy who made it up, and he has a really good video on YouTube that, like, breaks it down. It's very nice. Rocket Book is a journal device, but it's weird, I guess. Yeah, I've never heard of Rocket Book. It's reusable. Hmm. Yeah, Keith, people get very serious about their um, bullet journals. Which is like, um, I don't know. It's one of those things like my uh, keeping a planner and keeping a journal stuff is um, really, really helpful to me. And I definitely like, um, there's times of the year where I'm like on top of it and keeping everything recorded and staying very organized. And there's times of the year when um, I'm, it's a clusterfuck and I'm not actually using it and um, it's a mess. But for the times when I do use it, it helps me a lot and I try not to take it too serious or, or care about it. Like, um, like it, I try not to make it a job 
to keep <laughs> to keep my planner. So I thought I would share that. I'm excited to um, start using it. I'm like like a lot of people. I have um, a million uh, sketchbooks and notebooks that I'm never going to get to. But um, with my uh, planner stuff, I know I'm going to get to them, and I know I'm going to use them. Oh, a David Lynch. That sounds really fun, actually. Poor guy's getting divorced. Which is like, um, like I love David Lynch, and I love David Lynch's movies, but um, I feel bad for anybody who's married to him. He seems like he would be a very difficult person to be married to. I do not know the name of his wife or soon to be ex-wife. Um, I think she was like script supervisor on his movies and that's how they met. I'm not 100% sure. Apparently, when I went to California College of Arts and Crafts, now just called California College of Art, um, I think his daughter was going there at the same time that I was, but I never met her or him. <laughs> I think that's a fair assumption, E.D., but um, I think they're just uh, artistic collaborators. Because David Lynch definitely thinks that Laura Dern is the cat's pajamas. Yeah, Rudak, I have, I have like weird feelings about, um, like you said, he, he focuses solely on his work, which is kind of sad. It's like, yeah, that's kind of sad, but um, I think that's the yeah, you know, that's the life he wants, you know. And I guess if as long as it's, um, you know, the way he wants to live. I guess what's sad about it is um, the people in his life that want to have something a little more from him. Good evening, comma crack. crack. Let's pull up some David Lynch. a million photos of him but they kind of all just look exactly the same yeah do I do a young lynch or a wizened lynch I think old lynch he looks a lot more fun to draw oh I know I'll do the there is a What's the quote? There's a quote from him. 
where he's like doing an interview and he talks about how um, uh, after you make a movie, you have to go around and go to all the shows and do all these interviews and talk about the movie. But the movie is supposed to be the talking for him. And, um, and I feel that And there, oh, there it is. <laughs> it says, as soon as you finish a film, people want you to talk about it. And then he makes this squinchy face. It says that um, the film is the talking. I think I'm going to draw this squinchy face right here. That's great. I have not seen David Lynch's John Ford. Is that like from a movie? <laughs> the Fablemans is underrated. Oh yeah, I have not seen that. But I'm probably gonna now. I keep telling myself I'm gonna finally buy that um, David Lynch, uh, what do they call it, like a master class or something? Where he teaches like a couple hour lecture about um, how he makes movies. Because that sounds really fun. So I think I'm going to do this with his head kind of up in the corner here. And then like... His suit kind of filling up this space. I think the trick with this expression is his, like, mouth. And, like, has a little bit of teeth showing here. Oh, you watched that master class, Edie. Was it good? Uh oh, -huh, there's a holiday sale. That's actually great. I might do that. <laughs> yeah, Rudek, you know, if you listen to his autobiography, it's so funny how, like, um, everyone, because he's been married three or four times. And all of his um, ex-wives are like, David Lynch is a genius. I love him. D don't want to be married to him anymore, but I love him so, so much. Like, it's, it's really um, funny. <laughs> it's like they, nobody, like he doesn't seem to be on bad terms with any of his ex-wives. But none of them want to be married to him anymore.
this showing up at all? A little bit. If this likeness is coming together very good. <laughs> yeah, Edie, one thing at a time. That is something um, that is really hard to do. And it is, this is a weird face. Like his, let's see if I can get it so you can see. You kind of would expect the insides of his eyeballs to be, of like his eyelids where they're squinched closed to be lower than the outside, but it's kind of the opposite. And the same with his eyebrows. Like his eyebrows are kind of lower on the outside which with it for a squinched face, I keep trying to want to draw it the opposite way. Because in the drawing, it's making him look kind of worried more than weirdly squinched. I don't know. Does not really look like him.
I was writing the script for my graphic novel, I was recommended a book called Save the Cat, which really helped. Well, I've never heard of that. By Blake Snyder. I'm gonna get in. I'm gonna check that out. the The only book I have ever read that I thought was like a really good writing book um, was called Invisible Ink, and I cannot remember who wrote it. Um, it's like a sort of a breakdown on, and it's really like specific to three-act structure, but in like a, a really good way. Oh, there's a edition special for novelists. I love the book called Secrets of a Best-Selling Author. It's about the guy who wrote the Perry Mason stuff. Oh, that's interesting. You mean the Perry Mason novels, not the TV show, right, Pippi Pop? <laughs> oh, that's interesting. The thing I want to um, I want to check out the most from a, the David Lynch masterclass is I'm very very curious about his um, his method with uh, note cards where he like I forget how many note cards he says but he says like if you have like it's some like sixty note cards. And each one has something in it about a story. It's like once you get that number, you're done. You have a you have a movie. And that's something that I have never understood what the hell he's talking about, and would like to. And I think he covers that in his master class. I like using the story clock from plot devices, mainly because I have trouble with plotting. 60 cards, 60 minutes. Yeah. I feel like this likeness is getting a little closer. Is the focus work? Yeah, the focus is working okay.
<laughs> Thanks, Rudak. Yeah, his hair is like a huge part of it. Earl Stanley Gardner is the author of that one, Pippi. And I'm gonna have to be going through the chat after this gets normal posted to redo all these awesome uh, story writing uh, resources. There's a book, I haven't done a ton of like um, reading of like how to write books, books on how to write. The one that everyone um, often recommends is the Stephen King one. But I, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't find it that, that helpful really. like jowls on this side are just a little bit bigger. I think I made his head generally too f squished or something. Yeah, if I get it, it's probably close enough. Yeah, yeah, maybe I can pull his mouth back just a touch. That is a little bit better.
brush is kind of dirty. And it's not making a good mix. Let's see here. Should have gone a little bit darker on my pencils, I think. I kind of like. These red pencils underneath the drawing. Thanks, Rudak. I'm really digging this gradient. I think I'm gonna hit it with the hairdryer to lock it down. I have a space heater in here and I always have to make sure it's turned off because if I have it on and the hair dryer at the same time, it'll blow the fuse or the breaker anyway. <laughs> I'm kind of cheating, but I'm watching the segment about 3 by 5 cards. He gets 70 cards and writes down 70 scenes, and when he's done, he has a movie. Yeah, I mean, that just makes it sound really easy, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, total piece of cake. I got to say, as a 49-year-old man with hardly any hair on top, I am super jealous of David Lynch's hair. Look at this goddamn flowing lion's mane. <laughs> I think if I had hair, it would be this a similar color, like it would be on its way. Have very salt and peppery hair, like my like my beard. Hey, Charles. Oh my gosh, that sounds like a great month, actually. Blue Velvet is such, like, a wonderful and terrifying movie. Like, last time I watched it, I was really struck with how, like, so many of the sets feel like you're on a sound stage. Like they feel like there's an artifice about it that is like just really like amazing. I should I feel like I should say, like whenever people show up in the chat, I always use your screen name, um, even if I know you don't go by it in real life, just because um, I don't know how people want me to talk about you when you're on the chat. <laughs> the soundstage totally works. 
to so the story feels like an artificial surface being dug into. Yeah. I need to rewatch Existence again. I didn't like it the first time, but I'm hoping I enjoy it more. Oh, man. Keith. Yeah, I like Existence. I think I liked it the first time, too, though. So your, um, your mileage may vary. I guess I did feel a little bit different about Existence after um, I worked in the video game industry a little bit. Because a lot of the video game industry stuff was just like, ugh, dumb. But I like Existence. But also Existence just to make sure I'm following the conversation, is not um, a David Lynch movie. <laughs> There's a lot of like overlap between Lynch and Cronenberg. I Cronenberg's one of those dudes. I feel like I need to watch more of his movies. Um, just because um, when I do watch them, I like them. I want to check out the new one. But I don't know if it's on streaming yet. The <laughs> Nintendo. It's always great to see the shadow stage because it changes the shape in unexpected ways that are fun to see. I agree. This part definitely feels like um, sculpting as much as it does painting. Like, the shape is just, I don't know. Exactly what you said, Charles. Yeah, Cronenberg has a new movie. It came out, like, this summer, I think. It has something to do with people, like, doing um, illegal body modifications or something. Was that Cronenberg that did a history of violence? I don't know if I realize that. I remember really liking that movie. I've talked about it on stream before, I think, about how it's got such a great like ending. The last scene where he, the dude sits down with his wife and is like, what are we going to do now? It's so good.
If you haven't seen Eastern Promises, that was good too. Oh. With new movies that are in cinemas such a short time now, I immediately add them to my just watch list. So that at the very least I'll be notified when they're available on streaming. Yeah, we um we tend to switch up our streaming services kinda on the regular, so we um can catch everything. So it's hard to maintain like continuity with with stuff like that. Because sometimes when you sign up again, all of your watch list stuff is just gone. shadow up on his forehead looks a little more blue than down on his chin. Dead Ringers is pre peak Cronenberg. Did Cronenberg do um Crash. <laughs> Thanks, Charles. Yeah, he, his hair definitely wants to get the hell out of there. Uh oh, we got conflicting reports about Crash. <laughs> There's two movies named Crash. Yeah. What's the other what's the other one? I like um, I like James Spader, especially when he was young. I think he was did some amazing movies. And I did not care for that TV show that he did, but um, God bless him. I'm glad he had a steady gig for that long. Blacklist is exactly what I'm talking about, Keith. Yeah. Red is nice touch that Lynch's pain is <laughs> flowing into the environment. Yeah. Try to get a little bit of a gradient into this red.
this red is too wet. I have to be careful not to touch it. I think I might let the face dry a little bit and then go back in with the pencil and do some rendering that way. Just watch so that you know where something is streaming if you look it up. It's pretty useful. Oh. <laughs> you have a watch list for all the things you want to see. And from there you can toggle. Oh, that sounds amazing, actually. If you get it, you're going to dig the Lynch Masterclass. I believe it. I think that there is something really... Um, extraordinary in the way David Lynch approaches storytelling and I think it's something that um, would translate very well to comics This black is not going down as dark as I want it to. Yeah, Lucas, I think that like a velvet glove cast in iron is pretty Lynchian. He has that like, um, I don't know, what would you call that feeling where somebody doesn't belong and is in over their head kind of a feeling? Oh, yeah, and don't wait for tomorrow to get your coffee.
I got eight hours for the first time in two and a half months. And I was starting to feel like it <laughs> looks like here. Yeah, man. This um this world we live in is not good for sleep. I have been like like even when I um even when I feel like I sleep good, I wake up feeling like I need more sleep. Although, I think my thing is I think I just need to get more exercise. I think that's probably my problem. Like, I need some good cardio, and I have not been getting it very much lately. Thanks, Rudak. My barista today was a boy. <laughs> he saw how much I enjoyed today's feature and insisted I try the other. Oof. <laughs> My cats make sure I don't sleep past 6 a.m. Yeah, no, that actually is a good point. Like, we have... Um, between our cat and Tula. My cat has, does this thing where um, she'll stand on my, like sit on my chest and then like tap my face. And um, I need her to fucking stop doing that, but it's so cute. Well, I still kind of have mixed feelings about this portrait. I always feel um, like well, like likenesses aren't my strongest suit. I can do them in a pinch. But um, they're a lot of work. I feel like this like has kind of the vibe, but it's not it's not all the way there. But I think it works as a picture.
brush is too small for what I'm trying to do. Oh, thank you, Mark. Yeah, I have a sale on original art at Cadence Comic Art going on right now. 20% off until January something. Um, so if you have a sweetheart like yourself who needs uh, some original art, go get it. Also, like and subscribe. sure not to disrupt the laws of nature and cats. <laughs> Thanks, Lucas. Yeah, I like that red pencil. I'm there's a thing that um Bill Sinkevitz is so good at where he uses red outlines, especially for skin, and it like um works so good and it's something that I would like to be able to do better but um, have not quite figured it out like I still got this guy on my desk but you can see it right here on the cover actually like can you see, uh, it's gonna get too dark like this line right here is red and it um, just looks so good like I guess it works for for light skin more than anything else but I, th I think it works on dark skin too I'm trying to find a, a more examples but I don't know if I'm gonna. Now I just kind of want to sit around and look at this book again. It's a great book, ED. The ghosts are afraid. His art scares ghosts away. Guaranteed. <laughs> oh. I was just um, <laughs> after looking at that book, I was started to refocus on the art, and um, I l am loving this the way that his shirt is working. That's nice. Gotta go upside down so the gradient goes the right way.
I'm going to try to go a little darker with this red still. Try this black a little bit too. Just that little dark on the suit changed a lot. Yeah, it brings that just the tiniest bit of shape to it. I think this is getting close to being done. Like I feel like I could do more to it, but I'm getting to where it's like, you know what I want is a little more like, I want it to be a little bit more cool like in this area.
try like some cobalt blue really thin in here. Um, I just grabbed a black, I think, I don't think I realized that was um, a watercolor pencil. Now it wants to spread pretty good. Ugh, I kind of hate that. That's really taken over. too dark. Okay, I'm not allowed to touch those anymore. All right, I'm gonna call it quits. I think this is it's good enough. <laughs> Here's my not watercolor pencil that I have out for black. Actually, I should do white signature. This guy dead. I'm tempted to do splatter, but I don't think it's I don't think this is a splatter painting. I think this is a not that. some of the red out of his hair. <laughs> Till the tape comes off should be the name of one of these cool down hangouts. That would have been good actually. Okay, I'm gonna sign it in red. And now the tape comes off. Beautiful. <laughs> that is a funny David Lynch portrait. I like it. That turned out all right. I feel pretty good about that. It's a good way to end my week. This has been like a, this day has been one of those days where I have been going all day long and have accomplished hardly anything. So this feels pretty good to have a nice little David Lynch drawing done at least.
Thanks, Rudak. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, E.D. Of how much light is on this one? He's probably wishing he had sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, I thanks, Chuck. I, I appreciate that. Like, I feel like I my temptation is almost always to fill in everything to like get rid of the white, and um, I'm glad I didn't with this one. Yeah, anyone who knows David Lynch, send him a link to this video so he can buy it. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Um, I hope everybody has a great weekend and um, does something fun and hangs out with uh, friends. Yeah, and I hope everyone has a great night. Uh, Tell the people you love how much you love them. I love all you guys. All right. Take care. Bye.